Right, my name's Ian, welcome to my studio, the old Dupper studio. Uh, tonight I'm going to be attempting to remaster and uh, clean up some stuff which was originally recorded in 1992. It's actually uh, the 1st of September, or was it the 11th of the first one or the other? It's sometime in 1992 anyway, so uh, the band I used to play in years ago. It was a four piece, um, two guitars, sometimes two vocals, uh, bass and drums. Um, the stuff was originally done on to tape and it was, um, over the years, it's um, been transferred. It was, it, was mass it was recorded onto 16 track tape and then released on cassette, <laughs> of all things. And then... Uh, some years later I transferred the cassette onto mini disc. Um, last night I was going to be doing this but um, I completely cocked up and had no um, uh, restream on, on the uh, the bus so it was uh, dead quiet. <laughs> uh, first things first, because the levels on this are all over the place, and by the way I'm not vlogging anything, no software reviews, um, no instrument reviews, no speaker reviews, no ear training software, no circle of the fifths courses, nothing like that. You're just watching some old bloke playing around in his studio and uh, you might glean something from it, you might not, who knows. If you do, um, like and subscribe. Uh, various points in this, I'm going to probably do a, uh, four, about three or four or five, perhaps five of them. You've got one, two, I've got... Originally there's 10 songs on, uh, 12 songs, but I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 tonight, I think. 6 tonight, and uh, that would that would do, that take me up to, um, what time is it now? 8.37 here in the UK. Um, so that's going to take me up to about 10 o'clock-ish, I'd imagine, by the time I farted around and got all this um, stuff sorted out. So the first thing I'm going to do is, because the levels are actually... Um, all over took place, or took place. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to took for because I'm not even from the north. <laughs> uh, I'm going to um, grab all these um, individual bits and pieces, and uh, well, that one's over there like that. Let me just zoom in there. I think I'll cut that to turn the uh, the audience up or cut it out and something. I'll put it back on where it belongs. So, put that back on there, and uh, uh, what I'm going to do is um, normalise all of these, so I've got some sort of um, reference to start with, because the levels are, some of the songs have been recorded hotter on others, and mixed hotter on others. This stuff was never, ever mastered. It was literally uh, a guy who was learning... And bought himself some uh, recording gear, and uh, we were some of the gu early guinea pigs of his recordings. And I have noticed it's not mixed in very decent stereo. Um, so I've just grabbed them all, and uh, I'm just going to uh, process these and just uh, normalise them all, so they're all the same level, basically. So. Uh, Oh, process. Normalise. Oh, that didn't work out very well. Right, let's not do them all at the, all at the same time. Then. Let's do them one at a time then. Right. So, right. Processes. Normalise. Has that normalised it? Said normalise or I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? Okay then. Top oh, processing done. Okay. So I'm not used to. Uh, I've never normalised on this um, on Cubase since ages ago. So. That's it, it's doing it, so you can see the little there, uh, what's it's going around. Uh, 
I pick normalization up by I'll actually turn that down, haven't I? So uh, I'll think I'm going to undo that. Right. Oh, what a cock up right from the word go. Right. Just uh, edit, undo. Undo our normalized. And edit. Right, let me try that again. Not quite sure what I'm doing there. Right. I've got it the uh, normalized set on the wrong um, level, the wrong thing, I think. Right. Normalize and. Process normalize. Just had to do that. Oh, that's weird. You'd have thought it would have asked me how much um, normalization I want to do on it. Okay, I won't normalize anything then. We'll just uh, go off roughly out of the air then, off the uh, waveform, because obviously I don't know how to do that either. Stupid old duffer. Right. Uh, the next thing we'll do, I've. I was farting around this afternoon with some other material and I came up with this um, rather elaborate um, chain on the um, stereo outbus. I purchased this today, this um, X noise thing, which is supposed to um, turn the turn down the noise with the uh, hiss level and stuff so this is just a quick what I'm dealing with the amount of noise just a uh I don't know, uh, with it activated, it's dead quiet now. What I did with it, I uh, had a little loop of what we're, what I'm going to play there for this zoom in on the, um, zoom in. On this uh, house of correction tune down here, there's a uh, considerable amount of noise. So I stuck it in to learn, and it comes up with this um, profile. So I'll just do it again. So it's it, so it's uh, learned the curve and stuff, and uh, taken out some of the noise. So I'm not going to use that uh, tune. I'm going to go back up to the top here and go back to this original one I was messing around with, and then I've um, gone put it through um, a compressor. I do, but this is just tickling in it. This is a um, vintage compressor. I don't want to see what it is. A weak child. I think it's based on a fair child. Which, uh, so that's just touching the uh, barely, barely one dB of compression going. Now it sounds absolutely awful, so I've got to go back to that, um, what's it, uh, X noise, and uh, get the threshold set right and stuff. So, uh, well, I could really do turning it up, so um, I'm going to have another go at that um, normalised function, so audio. I'll try it from up here. I don't see why it should make any difference in processing. Um, no lies. Please select an event. I want that one not. Right. I ain't got a clue to do this, so uh, it's there's an event selected. Audio. Oh, this is all going rather well, isn't it? Uh, what are we doing? Processes. Normalize. Uh, 
Has that done it? version of cube actually just use it click it and it would um do this uh, take off auto apply normalize apply it's not asking me the level to normalize it too so that's pretty bizarre um this is not going well at all so i think what i'll just do is do it by eye like i was doing the other night and uh All going horribly wrong. Edit, undo glue, edit. Right, there we are. Right, I'll just drag it up on there and bring it up manually on this particular chain. So that's of course it's going to raise all the noise floor and everything. Um, right, let's go back to my uh, X noise and see if that actually makes it sound any better. I don't bother with that plug in yet. Well, what this little button on the, the right does is different so I can actually monitor what's um, what it's for that so then now it's going through the um it is removing the uh some of the hiss out the top i can hear that doing that so let's bring the um we told up and see how hard i mean and i don't give a toss about the lights that are lost nothing but the kids who get hooked i'll take no blame when you write up your brain So I've got the, uh, just a tap on the pre-child there, and then I've got the this um, thing running a preset. Mix bus love. Just touching on that, and then that's going to, into Oxford Inflator. I'm already hitting my master bus too hard, so I think I'm just going to hit it and then undo volume and undo, undo back to the beginning to where I started with. <laughs> right. Undo volume, where am I going to? Undo volume. Uh, how many controls are just going to do? Right. I should be back to how I. That's it, right. This is back to how I originally had it. Earlier on when I was playing around this afternoon trying to uh, suss out how things worked, which I obviously haven't done very well. So, anybody who's watching now will go, this bloke's fucking useless. And you were probably right, that's why it's called the older version studio and you can all be smuggling how good you are compared to me. Ain't got a clue what he's doing, ain't got a clue how to use Cubase, so Cubase Pro ain't got a clue how to use it, look, has he? Right. <clears throat> so back somewhere near default and stuff. Right, let me go and see what we've got now then. So pre child. Let's go back to that one. I've got 
got a twig child and then say so this um this one i've just got it on a preset it's just for the fans and it's not for romance a small little two friends it's the profit from the sale of hard drugs and then we have the ox inflator going into Golfos because my ears are shit with um, quite a 54 and 82 on the Thames because I know that um, it's going to be dodgy and then I've just got it going through an L2 just to make sure it's not too bloody loud L2 maximizer just threshold just it just attenuates it should it uh, hit the limiter back to so i'm gonna do that on i'm gonna do that on everything all the trucks are going through the master push and i'm gonna treat them all the same so all i need to do now is just set my length and then uh Just going to my file explorer a minute because I uh, was doing something last night and uh, I totally cocked everything up. Uh, it just mixes. Do, 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 do. No, I don't find out where I put it now. Do, do, do. No, right, okay. I don't know. I don't know what I've. Uh, I'm storing it to my music G. Do do twenty twenty three recordings. That's it. CBD remaster. So I'm going to get rid of all. No, I'm not stuff in the mix down. That's it. Deleting these ones. That's right. Now I can actually start exporting stuff again. Right. Okay, right, here we go then. So this first tune is called The Smuggler. Um, most of the stuff was written by the uh, other guitarist, Pete. And uh, apart from one or two tunes on here, um, he used to be a... Well, I still is a, a folk guitarist at heart, and uh, he was, uh, he worked the likes of Gordon Gill Trap and stuff years ago. So, um, and uh, very, very clever man. The bass player, the chap named Warren Lyington, is now Dr. Warren Lyington. He's uh, got his own business out in uh, I believe it's Ann Arbor in the United States I think, I think Madonna comes from there is um, a year younger than me so he'd be 59 Peter be probably 70 now I would imagine um, they, were, they were both research well one was a research physicist and the other one was a research chemist at a place called Courtauld Acetate in Coventry years ago and, uh, and the, the drummer's a guy called Paul Hobday um, and he was a uh, paint sprayer, a, a restoration company who did cars. I don't know what the hell's happened to him, to be honest. He, I know he got in, involved in uh, some illicit substances uh, after his dad died and went a bit off the rails. And so uh, I'm not quite sure what happened to him. But uh, I know Pete's, uh, he went up to um, a university somewhere up in... Uh, God's own country up north. Uh, Halifax, somewhere around there, Halifax University or somewhere around there. He taught there. I don't know if he's still teaching there. And his uh, lady wife was an ophthalmologist. So. But, uh, anyway, let me export this one and uh, I'll go on to the next tune and see if it's any better. <laughs> right, I'm just going to uh, click this uh, off here. So I just want to make sure it doesn't get too loud on this so I want sort of 12 on the integrated loops so, so I can upload this stuff to um, 
Spotify or whatever at a later date. So I'll export the rabbit. In. So that's the first one. Um, let's... The guy who originally mixed it didn't mix the guitars um, left and right enough. My guitar, I'm playing uh, the electric on that. So there's a 12 string acoustic being played on it. And um, he's sort of mixed it sort of like that, the way I hear it, the guitar. But I can't de mix it or anything. It's, you know, it's. Uh, I don't even suppose the original tape still exists anywhere, uh, whatever. But uh, so the first one, that's a smuggler. We used to uh, open up with that one. Uh, this next tune is a song about um, 
Ireland. And I remember the uh, the landlord of uh, one of the pubs we used to rehearse in regular. He was a bit of a twat, but um, he used to... <laughs> To introduce him to tears almost this this Jimmy. I don't know why, but you, you'll find out. You'll find out. So I'm just visually sort of bringing the level of that one up as well. So uh, so it's somewhere near, and uh, I'll just uh, get rid of um, just bypass all these plugins temporarily again. I just want to see how much noise it's taken out of this one. So, so I do the difference again. I don't want it to sort of take all the top end and leave too many artifacts in it. So. Right, that sounds like it's not going to be taking too much much out of it, so I'll just put it back into audio mode and uh, obviously put all the uh, plugins back on again. And then uh, I'm not going to bother the gate. That's someone was playing around with this afternoon when I was just, uh, doing it some stuff. Uh, so once again, uh, this one's uh, a, a Pete on the acoustic, me on the electric. And uh, oh, we're doing cancel <laughs> while export again. So I'm just going to export this one audio mix down as is. Hopefully, it'll uh, work out. Orange and green says so song about the troubles in Northern Ireland, and uh, you'll export. I think I might have it slightly too loud, but um, whatever for the uh, the Luff thing, because I think they like minus twelve or something for Spotify or whatever it is. But uh, whatever, it is what it is. Right, so uh, this one is uh, export. So what happens? The songs that we do have a bit of a serious message to them, and uh, this is a song about people who have a colour problem. Those colours are orange and green. Never got 
the problem that couldn't be resolved Not the problem anyway They caught him one evening Wrong end of a dead end street An innocent victim caught between Just keeping the scar straight Revenge for another man's death Torn apart by orange and was the old orange and green um so um song about the troubles in northern ireland i'm uh, half irish myself my uh my mother's from belfast uh, so uh i uh know what's been not went on over there um, all in the sake of religion i have absolutely no time for religion whatsoever the amount of people who died in the name of religion yeah, over the years, I'm a total atheist, so uh, there we go. Yeah, that's enough about that. Right, I'm going to um, this next one. <laughs> when when, the, when the, these two characters came round my house uh, in, in uh, the 1980. Uh, 1990 sorry 1991 um Pete had never seen anybody playing an electric guitar up close up and stuff because he's always it was a finger picking 12 string guy he had all his guitars built by a chap named uh, Rob Armstrong in Coventry so it's an Armstrong guitar uh, A in the headstock all hand built beautifully crafted and instruments by a real really talented luthier he had a couple of 12 strings and a couple of uh, six string um, what's it's and uh, um, Pete wrote this song for me after after watching me doing this about one night <laughs> uh, I've, I've always you know grown up being a rocker and stuff and uh, old uh, old EVH himself um, was one of my uh, um, sort of people I wanted to sound like in my younger days and uh, 
I wanted to be Richie Blackmore, I wanted to be Dave Gilmore, I wanted to be uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen and uh, Gary Moore and all sorts of people. But uh, it's a uh, sort of melting pot of my style of playing now uh, over the years. Uh, so he wrote, wrote this song for me called Both Hands and... Uh, it's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, it's quite funny actually, it's one of the uh, more uh, funny songs he wrote, so being a folk musician, he was a very entertaining bloke, Pete was, and what is, or, so I haven't seen him for, uh, Christ, it must be 20-odd uh, years now, I would have thought, since he moved up north, so, uh, yeah, um, alright, so, anyway... So I'm just going to do the same thing again on this one. I want to just use the same plug-in chain. And I'm just, one, I'm just going to um, just see how much noise this one's taken out, just in case I have to adjust it. So uh, let's press play on that and see what, what it's taking out. Uh, it's taking. That's what it's. That's what it's removing. So quite a bit of the tape hiss. So without it, it is uh, absolutely noisy as anything. So actually, I don't want to over clean it because I notice if you know, over clean it with this plug in it. Um, Tends to leave a little bit of artifacts. I'm disappointed the guy who originally mixed this didn't mix the guitars a little bit um, wider. I had the 12 string on the left and uh, the other guitar on the right to give it more of an indication of uh, how it was when we actually played it live. So, but uh, there we go, can't do anything about it now. I'm going to just try and reclaim these recordings the best I can. I'll just reset the loudness thing just to make sure this is not ridiculously loud. Uh, this is a bit of self-indulgent twaddle trying to do a bit of Eddie at the start. Not very well, in my humble opinion, but <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it is what it is. It's, uh, this is not the best best I, I'd ever played this, but this, this, this whole thing was recorded live in a, a pub called The Weaver's Arms in Coventry. I'm not sure whether it's still there. I haven't actually been that way in a long time, so... Uh, there's a massive back room in it, and uh, we used to rehearse in another pub called Carney's, which was bought another biker's pub, and uh, that's uh, that was demolished years ago, it's now flats, so uh, as life moves on, things change, so well, let me uh, export this one then, and uh, well... Uh, so it's a bit tongue cheek The lyrics are absolutely brilliant, I think. <laughs> so, that, that's uh, what's this? Um, do it with both hands. Right, there we go. Oh, let me export that. So the uh, intro is a bit long. We did a self-indulgent, uh, poor, poor version of Eddie, but. Uh, I think at the time I was playing a Charvel through a GACM 800 uh, Marshall combo. Um, the bass player was using a PV um, bass rig with uh, things like an 18 inch or something like that, and a, um, I think he was using an Aria or something like that. Because later on he bought a, um, a fretless. Uh, Pete was obviously playing his Armstrongs, and the drum kit, I believe, was um, a Pearl export. So, anyway, export the audio on that one. Uh, any comments? You can, you're quite welcome to. The comments section is working, so uh, I'll look up occasionally. I know I've got two viewers. I did have three earlier on, but now I've got two. I don't know if the same two viewers, but uh, the comments are working. If you want to comment and, and uh, whatever, I'll get back to you and give you a shout out. Let me just abort this. I just need to abort that because I forgot to take that uh, noise plug in out of uh, the 
correct thing. I need to put back into audio. That was just playing the difference what it's taking out, other than uh, what it's supposed to be. It's not like the drug in. Hey, stupid old duff, I don't know what you're doing. There was a little bit just at the end of that where you could hear the drummer going, Nightmare! <laughs> I think we'd play that like 
faster than we normally played it <laughs> or he had the uh, red light fever or something like that <laughs> yeah. some people get that as soon as, the, as soon as you know it's the tapes rolling you um, sort of clam up and stuff and uh, <laughs> I think he had a case of the uh, red light fever on that one so uh, <laughs> oh dear right um, let me go back onto that screen there and uh, once again I'm just going to check the how much this um, X noise is taking out just to make sure it's not um, I see if I've got a reusable sort of um, yeah I've Right, yeah, so I really enjoy playing this one. It's called The Professor. So, uh, right, here we go. Then. This is called The Professor.
Uh, oh dear. <laughs> uh, but you did used to get carried away sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> we, um, when we was, um, when we was out playing gigs, we, we, uh, we went out, we used to play a lot of biker pubs and, um, the rugby clubs and stuff like that. And, um, uh, We'd go out with a band called the Bone Diggers, um, which was um, Roddy Radiation's band. So out of the specials, and the guitarist out the specials, and he left the specials, and uh, sort of five, 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 six years afterwards, he formed a band called the Bone Diggers, and uh, we used to go out uh, gigging with gigging with them all over the place for support here and there, and uh, we, uh, yeah, yeah. We we supported uh, a, a band called the Rogues, which are basically a couple of members of uh, Doctor Feelgood at a place in Coventry called the um, General Wolf, which is now a uh, I think it's a bloody curry house or something, something like that. Massive great pub. We used to have a big back, big loudest PA in, in the city and stuff in there, and uh, they liked us so much they got us a, um, a regular uh, monthly slot at a place over Lemon Kelly's in Leamington, which was like one of the hardest places to get into. And then, uh, yeah, we used to play there quite regular. And during that song, Pete used to put his white coat on and uh, get all these syringes from work and start spraying uh, various coloured liquids all over the place and. Or be slavers, quite amusing. <laughs> it got totally cat. The black male's a total eccentric, which uh, clever people tend to be. So, uh, yeah, Pete had, uh, I think, two degrees or something like that. And I know he's got one in chemistry and one in mathematics, and he was qualified to teach and all sorts. So, uh, yeah, clever chappy. Clever people in that band, and uh, I was. I was one of the stupid ones, I was just a mere tool maker, so... <laughs> there we go. Right, let me go to uh, this one then. This one's another song about drugs, believe it or not. <laughs> this one's called The Pusher. Um, it's about, uh, obviously, a, a drug peddler or whatever you want to call them now. Um, so, I'm just going to do that same thing with that. That one, the last one got a bit loud. It was a bit louder than I wanted it, so... Well, never mind, right. Uh, so let's get the old XORs up again and just check the difference on this one and see how much it's taking out. I should have just left it at the, that's one setting I had and just gone from there with it. So I'm not going to touch any of the things I've got there. I want, I want a sort of consistency in the sound to some extent if I can. So right, that's, I've sorted out the end of that. So this is another one about dr drugs. Um, called the pusher. So there we go. Let's see what this one comes out like. So I just wish the, the initial guy had mixed it and mixed the guitars a bit wider. Uh, but unless I invest in spectral layers and totally deconstruct it and redo it like that, but I'm, I'm not going to go that far.
Some people call me a heartbreaker Some can't wait for my call Some people call me a life taker Some call it no life at all So that was The Pusher. Um, I remember <laughs> there's a guy on radio and TV called Jeremy Vine. He's a right tall, weird, fucking up his own ass bloke now. He used to work for the um, Coventry Evening Telegraph as the music correspondent. And uh, one of the places we used to play, it was a place called the Lady Godiva or the Dive in Coventry. And it was a biker's pub. Um, I've always been into bikes. I'm, I'm not a biker myself um, per se, but I love bikes and, uh, and anything with an engine and wheels and stuff like that. But uh, he, he came down to see us down the Lady Godiva. Well, I seem to remember he uh, he was shitting himself in his bikers' pub because he's got all the, the bikers in there and the the. Uh, some of the, the, the wannabe bikers, the um, Hell's Angels, and st not Hell's Angels, but the uh, the, the, the motor lo lo local motorcycle gang, the outlaws, there was the pagans and the outlaws, and 
I used to drink down there there and whatnot and so it's full of bikers and bikes everywhere outside and stuff and the smell of uh, it's one of these pubs where you know it's you know it's back in the uh 80s and 90s where you go in there and you could just just smell smell stuff being smoked <laughs> he absolutely shit himself in there <laughs> terribly blinded and he said oh we sent sent him this uh, sent him a demo of uh, some of some of the stuff off which i'm redoing tonight and uh and eventually put some some in the telegraph and says all oh, the very political <laughs> oh if you want to take it that way there's a lot of tongue-in-cheek and all but so there's are, are some messages in there and some uh, hard-hitting hard-hitting um themes we uh well not we but pete used to write all the lyrics and stuff so coming from a folk background he used to write all the lyrics and uh whatever so uh yeah anyway Back to the job in hand, right, this is one of the tunes I actually I wrote the music for, well I think I wrote the music for it, I might have stolen it from somewhere. <laughs> I can't remember, it's such a long time ago. Oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is a tune called Venice and uh, it's um, it's about Venice and the crime, cr crime and criminals in Venice. So. Uh, um I think I think that's what it's about anyway. Anyway. It's another uh I'm not gonna bother with that um checking the thing because uh, it's pretty much um all the same on the the um tape hiss. Be nice. Be nice. So I might spill this one on this side that's how this one goes. More acoustic guitar and it uh, say P used to have these Armstrong guitars and um, got um, some sort of pizza pickup in them. I think it was a Fishman or something like that in it. Fishman Bridge, and uh, so you could plug it in electrically, and then it'd go through a. Um, I think it was like a Boss BE5, a little con self contained pedal all around in the 80s, pre Zoom days, pre Kempler days, and all that sort of thing. And I used to put it through that straight into the PA and uh, have it cranked up fairly well uh, and that's uh, 12 string electric mix and that's what sort of made us unique as uh, a gigging band of the the uh, mix of the electric and the, the 12 string um, so, so. and then for some reason the band imploded i think it's when courtauld's shutting coventry the the two guys had to move away and warren did anyway warren, warren moved to america I think he worked for Ford or something for a long time, Detroit, and then uh, uh, went off and formed his own business. So, Dr. Warren Lyington. So, uh, there we go. Anyway, export.
Right, that will do for tonight, I think. Um, soon enough for that. Uh, we've got another, um, probably another six to do. One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, another six to do, which I sort of do another night or whenever I feel like it. So, uh, Right, thanks for watching. I don't know if anybody gleaned anything out of this. If you did, like, subscribe and all that rubbish. Um, not doing it for a living, so... Unfortunately. <laughs> I'd like to do it, uh, yeah, get a few more subscribers, but... Uh, that's the way it goes. Can't always have what you want, can you? You can't always get what you want. But sometimes you get what you need. Right, let me just... Uh, Get back up there and put that on there and we'll just uh, save that as is. 
Mm. Call that a night. Right. I shall catch anybody later. Bye.